During the Second World War, Britain and her allies, the Canadians and Americans, invaded Europe on June the 6th, 1944. But in order to be successful, seven bridges had to be captured by the Allies so that the Germans could not counterattack. One of these bridges spanned the Conn Canal just north of the invasion beaches. It was named Pegasus Bridge. This is the famous Pegasus Bridge. It is one of the most important landmarks from the Allied invasion of Normandy. Operation Deadstick's objective was to capture two bridges in Normandy across the River Orne and the Conn Canal, which provided the only exit eastward for British forces from their landing on Sword Beach. Failure to capture the bridges intact, or to prevent their demolition by the Germans, would leave the 6th Airborne Division cut off from the rest of the Allies. The bridge that we are looking at here is the bridge that was built to cross the Conn Canal in 1934. This bridge has since been replaced by another built to the same design, though a third size larger. The bridge over the Conn Canal received its name, Pegasus Bridge, because the emblem of the 6th Airborne Division, who captured the bridge, is the winged horse Pegasus. So, in the course of a few weeks, on June 26, the bridge was famously named Pegasus Bridge. When the canal was widened yet again, the original bridge was moved here to the museum as the memorial, and there it remains to this day. On 23rd April 1943, the British 6th Airborne Infantry Division was formed under orders from Allied Chiefs of Staff. One of 6th Airborne's units was the Oxfordshire and Buckinghamshire Light Infantry, commanded by Major John Howard, who were chosen for the attack. The gliders they would travel in were piloted by 12 men from C Squadron, Glider Pilot Regiment, who would then fight as regular soldiers once their first task was completed. The pilot of Howard's glider, Jim Wallwork, was a Canadian and was awarded the Distinguished Flying Medal for his actions. He and his companions had piloted their aircraft in the dark with only a compass and watch down to a perfect landing. After final instructions from their commander on the morning before they were to leave, the men of D Company prepared their weapons, equipment and supplies and prepared to go to war. That evening, Howard and his men marched to their gliders and embarked for Normandy and Pegasus Bridge, thus beginning Operation Deadstick. D Company, Oxfordshire and Buckinghamshire Light Infantry, had the honor of being the first Allied units to land on D-Day. Within minutes of landing, Pegasus Bridge had been fully captured, and the company dug in to hold it until relieved. First built in 1941 by Airspeed Aircraft, the Horsa Glider was the main transport glider of the Royal Air Force, and over 5,000 had been produced by the end of the Second World War. Built out of pine wood and covered with plywood, with a length of 67 feet and an 88-foot wingspan, it could carry up to 30 troops or a jeep and trailer or even a light anti-tank gun. This is believed to be a real Horsa Glider cockpit, rescued from a surviving aircraft in England and built into the rest of the replica airframe. 
This replica Horsa glider is displayed at the Memorial Pegasus Museum in Normandy. It was completed in 2005 using many parts of an original aircraft. Through what was later described as the most outstanding flying achievement of the war, the horses and their pilots competently delivered the company to their objectives. Even though they could carry vehicles as well, on this mission the gliders carried 90 men of Major Howard's company, with 30 men in each aeroplane. After loading their gliders with equipment and preparing for battle, D Company embarked for Normandy. At 11 p.m. on June the 5th, the three gliders headed for Pegasus Bridge took off from RAF Tarrant Rushton, towed by Halifax bombers. Flying over the English Channel at 7,000 feet, the bombers crossed the Normandy coast at 7 minutes past midnight on June the 6th, 1944, and released their towed gliders. The gliders landed within 100 yards of the bridge at 16 minutes past midnight. Because D Company had the honor of being the first Allied troops to land on D-Day, it also sadly had the distinction of having the first casualties as well. The amount of casualties was much less than expected, but some still gave their lives in the battle. One of the gliders broke in half upon landing, and some men were killed and wounded during the fight. They are buried at the Ranville War Cemetery, close to the bridge, along with other Allied troops. Lieutenant Den Brotheridge, Howard's second-in-command, was the first man killed on D-Day. He left behind a wife and two children. War is not bloodless, but because of the bravery and heroism of these men, victory was eventually achieved on D-Day. Operation Deadstick, the airborne attack on Pegasus Bridge, was a complete success, and because of that, the Allied armies were able to claim victory on D-Day. That is the story of Operation Deadstick, one of the many heroic actions fought to victory on June the 6th, 1944.